I just turned on the camera a little bit earlier, but I was just coming up with a riff and setting the tempo. So that's my song idea. This was the chorus. And then the, uh, that's going to be the verse. I was going to do it like here, but I think the tone is a little thicker if I do it all on the E string. I'll be a little more awkward, but it's for the tone. Okay. So I got my usual template open. I just set the tempo. So the drums you're hearing, that's for a metronome. It's just nicer to listen to than a click. I'm going to put drums down later on the electronic kit behind me, albeit, but I will actually play the part. So yeah, I'm going to do a left-right guitar, decide if I want to do overdubs. I usually do the guitar solo while I'm doing the guitar. It's just, it's easy because I'm still holding it. I usually do the bass after that, then the drums, then the vocals. That's just typically how I work. It's not like anyone, you know, writing a song has to do it in that order. This is just how I do it. This is original Christian rock, and I'm... If you're new, I make these videos just so you can see how I make my songs up. It's a pretty easy process and, you know, I don't overthink it. So what you see is what you get. I just kind of like play through the things and just piece it together as I go. I usually have a song structure. It's just A, B three times. <laughs> and sometimes I do an intro chorus. That's about it. And if I'm feeling like the third verse for the solo section is like a little boring, I might throw something there like a key change or an alternate chord progression but typically you know i'm gonna get started so here i go All right, I got the right side done. Or, no, I got the left side done. Now I'm going to do the right side. Apparently, I don't know the difference between the left and right. <laughs> so it's just a slightly different amp model. And I double it. I'm going to do a left side dub to uh, thicken up the chords. Just going to be that. I'm going to do a really simple lead part just to fill it out on the right side. So you have to find the spot here, but I'm going to do the improvised guitar solo. Looks like there. Yes. Solo's done, I'm gonna do the bass part now, so should be pretty simple. The drum loop is wiped out, and I'm going to sit down there and start tracking the drums. Actually, uh, the last song I was doing uh, some faster double kick stuff. If you ever see that, but you notice my legs aren't moving, I actually get a double bounce. Like, there's a way you can, like, hit down on the beater so it'll go, like, you hit down and it'll bounce twice. <laughs> I 
popped out some lyrics really quick. I have a rough idea for a melody, so I'm just going to hit record before I completely forget it and see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to do a harmony part. I just got through that in two takes. The first one failed because I bonked my hat on the mic and made a big <laughs> uh, But I got it the second try. Um, okay, so. All right, I got it. I was about three tries to get started going into it. I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do it in like falsetto or just do like my usual mixed voice. I opted for the usual mixed voice. With a bit of vocal fry it makes it sound like I'm yelling even though it's like super quiet and squeaky. <laughs> but it works. I just turn it down a bit, load a crap ton of reverb and there you go. I'm gonna bounce it down, line it up with the videos, edit all this footage and that fun stuff. I'll probably upload it tomorrow. It'll come out in like a week or so. So that's how it usually happens. If you check in my description box you're gonna find a link tree link. You can purchase and stream my music if you click on it. It'll just take you out to stuff like iTunes, Amazon, Spotify. You'll also find the lyrics. I just started putting in a link, which is a church in Glendale, California called Faith Center, pastored by Pastor Melissa Scott. I encourage anyone that has any interest in anything Christianity to check it out because I am like utterly disgusted with this stuff that I see going around that's passing off as Christianity and it's just absolutely ridiculous. And when I say that, someone unknowing i got a hair on my mic might think i'm being like oh you have to be more judgy and more like whatever but that's actually not the case did my phone just buzz probably when you actually read the bible and really understand the whole salvation process this thing where you see a bunch of people being like super judgmental of other people and saying oh these people are sinners over here but we're not. That's ludicrous. It's bullshit. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. It's total bullshit. The thing is, everyone is a sinner. So, okay, I just was watching this thing, and it was just some standard news channel. It was like international news, but they're saying this thing is happening in Australia, where they're like, this venue is refusing to let this guy come and do his thing and it's like some kind of christian presentation thing but the thing is this guy has a thing where his whole mo is he says a bunch of stuff about how gay people are sinners well here's the thing assume homosexuality is a sin well it just kind of falls into a subcategory of like sexual deviance or some kind of thing which is another subcategory of something else you don't even have to worry about that kind of thing because imagine it like this we're all sinners we don't say we're sinners because we sin we sin because we are sinners it's the condition we're in we all are under sin every single one of us so if you're blasting someone for doing something, you're also doing something wrong. Like, we're all in a big cesspool. I kind of said this like my last thing. It's a very descriptive thing. But imagine we're all floating and swimming and submerged in a big sewage pit. You pointing at that dude and saying, hey, you do this and you're a sinner is basically saying, hey, the crap on you is more smelly than the crap on me. It's absolutely ridiculous. Jesus did what he did to redeem us, to pay for us completely. It was a one-time sacrifice to cover all sins for all time. You look to him in faith and you're free and clear. Grace is unmerited favor. You don't earn it. So you come to God as you are. Whatever your problems are, just come to God. He places the Holy Spirit in you. And I always say, think of it as you're plugging into an outlet. You have to keep that connection there for the power to keep flowing. So faith is an ongoing and continuous thing. It's an action verb in the original language, and it's ongoing and continuous. You have to keep doing it for your whole life. You can like fall off and start up again, that sort of thing, I guess, but you know, 
in theory, you're supposed to keep faithing for your entire life. The Holy Spirit is within you, and what's happening is, rather than you trying to clean yourself up and make yourself presentable while you're floating in the cesspit, which is literally impossible, God places the Holy Spirit in you, starts working with you from there. You're forgiven. So someone that is saying, hey, you're a sinner and you do this, and they're being judgmental, by whatever measure you judge someone, you're going to be judged yourself. Don't worry about other people's stuff. You, if you are placing your trust and faith in God completely, just worry about yourself. Don't worry about anyone says to you. Like, hypothetically, what I was just saying, if you're gay and you become a Christian and you place all of your trust in God and say, I believe in the promises of God, I'm hanging my entire being on the promises of God, I'm redeemed because of what Christ did, your deal is between you and God. You work it out between you and God. That's it. Don't let anyone tell you differently and don't worry about what they say. God might start changing you. He might let it go. Who cares? It's your business between you and God. I have my own thing between me and God. No one can judge me for what I do and I'm not going to judge anyone else. Like that's Christianity. You are just trusting God. It's a relationship between you and God. Whatever your problem is, if someone is coming at you for that, they might as well be saying you're a sinner because you flip people off in traffic. Because Jesus said if you hate in your heart, you're as guilty as a murderer. So you're flipping someone off all pissed off at them, hoping they crash up the road. You're as guilty as a murderer. So why are you railing against that guy? Because you're also guilty, you dumb shit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little mad about it because it just pisses me off seeing this. Like, you have to understand, grace is unmerited favor. Once you have that faith connection, God works with you where you're at. It doesn't matter how bad you think you are. I promise you God has seen worse and he's worked with worse. Most of the people in the Bible are worse than you could ever be. I mean, King David took his friend's wife, slept with her and killed him. Like, <laughs> this is not like holier than thou stuff. This is for real. You have a relationship with God. God works with you. The Holy Spirit, as you continue in faith, will start to change you. You probably won't even notice that change. You won't feel anything. People like do all these stupid things where they do testimonies. They have you come down and do these altar call things. They'll make you say the sinner's prayer. That is all, once again, bullshit. You hear the message of the gospel and you trust the promises of God, that's it. God opens up your heart, turns on the receiver, you hear the message. Faith comes by hearing the word. You walk in faith continually and you're saved and no matter what some idiot is yelling at you and saying you do wrong and condemning you for, you don't dress right, you don't talk right, you don't act right, you do the wrong things, you drink, you smoke, you watch porn, you fart too much, whatever it might be, they're just an asshole. And you just trust God. And I, I know I'm swearing a lot here. I'm just like a little angry because like, I can't believe how stupid it is with these people. Like stop judging other people. <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, anyway, it's like, I got bad news for like someone that does that. Like someone who is absolutely 100% trusting the promises of God, who might be a homosexual, they're hanging their entire being on the promise that they are free and clear because of what Jesus did. God is going to work with them and have a relationship with him, with them if they just continue to have that trust. But the dude condemning them that thinks he's high and mighty because he's not doing stuff, blah, 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 it's going to hell a lot faster. So people need to write, read their Bible and understand actual salvation is just hanging everything on the promises of God and trusting God and having faith, which is stronger than belief, no matter what anyone in this world says. You just trust God. God will work with you. Don't worry about how you are. You're not too corrupted or too filthy or you haven't fallen too far. Just ask God for forgiveness. You've got it. Keep walking in faith. You're saved. That's it. If you lose that faith, you can throw it away of your own free will. Well, let me say this. There's a whole thing like with between like Calvinist and say are like Arminius where they think it's all predetermined or it's all free will. They're both right. It's a paradox. <laughs> That's where everyone gets tripped up. It's a paradox. It's both. God knows ahead of time, but you also have the free will to choose. You can't figure that out logically, but that's how it works. 
And that's how everything is with God. You have to go as low as possible and be as humble as possible. He'll raise you up. That's the paradox. Like That's how God operates. It's all paradoxes. So you just have to trust God implicitly, absolutely, no matter what. Don't expect a whole bunch of good things to come to you. In fact, you're probably going to get dumped on. The world is going to like just totally bash you and say you're a total idiot and you're a scumbag and blah, blah, blah. Just keep trusting God. That's what you need. If you're getting that kind of backlash, you're probably good <laughs> because that kind of backlash comes because the world loves its own, but it hates those of God. So you're getting crapped on by those like we than now people and or anyone else. Usually I actually find it's like people that say they're Christians that are actually doing the most dumping on other people. That's the whole thing. They're kind of plants almost like from the enemy to just make everyone feel bad and lose their faith. Keep trusting God. He'll work with you. Like, and don't even tell anyone your issues. Who cares? It's between you and God. I have issues. God's helping me work through them. If it's an issue that I feel or I, God probably feels that, you know, this is in the way, he'll get it out of the way. If it's not in the way and it's just something keeping me hung, humble, it'll probably stay there. But you just have to keep trusting. God is not looking for a bland, not fun, I don't do anything, will worship person that just, you know, sits there and beats themselves up. God is looking for faith. He wants you to trust him. And that's the thing. I trust God implicitly. Whatever happens, I trust God. I know he makes good on his promises. I'm holding to that. That's what makes me a Christian. Anything else is utter nonsense. Get rid of all of the traditions, all of the nonsense that goes on in the church. Just trust God and understand what the Bible actually says. Now that I went on a huge rant, if you check that link, the person that pastors that church is going to be explaining this even better than I ever could. And it's like one of the only places that actually teaches real, honest Bible as it actually explains salvation. I implore you to check it out. If you're in any way interested, you will very, very much benefit from it because I have not found any other place that has half of a clue what they're talking about. It's almost always super judgment or it's something where you come down and say the sinner's prayer and then you're saved and you don't have to do anything. You go back to your worldly life and don't give a crap about God, but you're saved. Nonsense. You walk in faith and trust God implicitly, have that faith continually, have a relationship with God built on that trust, built on love, and that's how it works. It's continuous, and it's not based on you cleaning yourself up. God will do the changing. You don't have to change your behavior. God will change it for you, and you won't even notice. And I do think that's happening to me because, like, if I meet up with friends that I haven't seen in a pretty long time, they're like, what happened to you? You're weird. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Because, like, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have been saying this. I would have thought I was a nutbag if I watched myself on YouTube right now. <laughs> but I'm not. I trust God implicitly, and I'm doing this as a faith act almost because I trust God and I see the things out there. And I found this really great teacher because I think God has led me to this teaching and I want to show you the same teaching. And I'm just like, hey, check this out. This is what it's about. It's not about judgy crap and it's not about traditions and weird ceremonies. It is just literally about the promise. Okay, yeah. Check it out, it's there. And I'd appreciate if you subscribe, like, comment, share. I'll uh, keep making the videos. Talk to you later.